Howdy y'all, welcome back to Holly's Garage. So today, in the middle of nowhere, middle of a field, basically, or pasture, we have today, a little square body. Now I've been wanting to get a square body for a while, or at least get my own. Right here behind me, we got 1978. Chevy K30 Dually. I <sighs> got two bowls out here in the pasture somehow and avoid mud pies here and there. But I've already been out here once to actually diagnose the issue so I can get what we need and go ahead and get started on it. So we've got a box of parts, got my toolkit few extra tools just in case like a pair of crescent a uh, pair of pliers which i forgot here last time i was out here but last time i was out here i went ahead we got the hood up and then we went and put a battery in it to diagnose and go find out the starter was actually the problem that he was having so that's what we're going to end up doing today. Getting the starter off, or the rest of the way off anyway, and put the new one in. Then I will go through uh, the plugs as well as the wires. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's not pretty, but I'll do a quick walk around with you. So the story goes, he was going to town and got to town just fine. He went and drove from town back to home and he felt as if the starter had kicked into the flywheel and kept spinning. And whenever we hooked up a pow power to the battery, it was immediately trying to engage. But yeah, she's got them bias splies. I shot air into him last time I was out here and it actually seems to be holding quite well you know typical rust luckily i have a set of fenders which i believe will work i'll have to talk to the owner of them though but this door is jank and doesn't want to open but that's to be expected it is a dual tank <sighs> oh got a big old hole in the dually or whatever everyone calls them dually bin is what I call them but got a nice little gash there mismatched parts everywhere nice little wasp nest into the brake light oh no the lens is gone we'll have to find one Stick gun it on this side. This dually bin ain't actually in a whole that bad shape. One thing I did not do. Well, it actually ain't awful swollen. It was a little bit varnished, but it might actually run off of it. Yeah, dents here and there, but it'll be pretty easy to pull out. And yeah, okay, that tire deflated just a little bit, but the rear tire is going to be even harder. As you can see, it's been out here for a long, long, long time. Oh, it does have plates. 2000. December of 2000, when the plates were going to expire. <sighs> <laughs> uh, bumper stickers. Of course, this has that. Whenever I get it, I'm going to be taking this off and then welding a hitch right here so that if I ever have to put a trailer in, I can do it from the front. That's the Edinger thing to do. Got front lockout hubs, which are surprisingly free. 
What's not gonna be fun is taking these tires off, putting on new tires. 6.5, 16LTs. Or 7. Yeah, 7.5. So, yeah, this is going to be a fun little truck to do. And the only problem... Oh, it does have disc brakes in the front. Cool. Problem is, is the brakes hose is going to be shot. Yes. But yeah, back in there. I already got the starter dangling. I don't know if I can... And there it is. I pull it down and just got it out of the way, but let's take a look at the interior real quick. And I will say the interior is not all that horrible. Oh, God. <coughs> oh, that's thicker than the secure size right there. Now, the story I got is the speedometer doesn't work, but got a nice little tachometer right there. But we do have keys. That's nice. Got a bunch of paperwork. Seat's not horrible. I set the starter bolts there. This thing's going to be fun. And what's even better? We've got cruise control. Still has to be seen if that even works. But, all right. So, typical Chevy. Doors were never latched. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is get the hood up and look at the starter, see if I can get those electric connections off from the top and then get the starter out of there and then get the new starter in. Which should be easier said than done because that thing weighs like 20 pounds. And I gotta crawl around in that. So under here we got a 400 small block. Basically 350 block, bored out a bunch. And got a little bit more horsepower, but I'll show you here. Starter. Basically, the starter basically immediately wants to engage. So, of course, this was a stock side post, and they put top posts on it. But we're going to take this off after I put it on, and there. So, yeah, we got the never. Good old never starts. Just because it was cheap and it was the cheapest one on the shelf. I am going to have to get in there. I forgot to get an air filter, but that shouldn't be a problem. And then I'll have to search around here. And we do have electricity in here, which is very surprising. Considering there's a torn down house over there, that's my grandpa's. But I'll get in here and looking at it, I think I might actually have to do this from the other side. Great. All right. Heave. Oh. Typical thing with any other project I have. Floorboards are gone. <sighs> However, the exhaust does look actually pretty damn good. <clears throat> Alright, here's the starter. I've already taken it out of the block. <sighs> that thing weighs like 40 freaking pounds. <sighs> so now we just gotta get up in here and figure out where everything is. And I don't know what that bolt does. Mm. I don't know what this wire is. Right there's the flywheel. 
I didn't see that before. Alright, ratchet. Mm. <sighs> Alright, I'll get this off and I'll check back with you. Alright, we got the old starter out. And I'm actually kind of curious as to what happened. Uh, this is just something that my dad showed me how to do. And I've actually rebuilt like three or four of them because the one in our square body kept on breaking. So basically, you're going to have a bolt here, a bolt here. And you're also going to have to take this one out. If I'm not mistaken, this might be the right size. It's not. Alright, hold it. mill right on the money all right so these are going to be two little uh studs basically or very long bolts oh come off and it's gonna be a really long a bolt for some reason it decided to get stuck in my ratchet there i'll take this one off because if it's stuck to the flywheel it's got to have done something in here apparently from what i've read these small block shitty starters will uh stick uh and once the engine's warmed up they have problems and apparently there's some sort of deal that you can do and swell up in like a starter from a 4.3 V6. All right, y'all are gonna get the first look. So that you pop that cap off and. Oh boy. Let me get you guys in here. Oh. Yeah, she's a. Uh... She's crispy. The brushes are bent out of place. and are gone. Oh boy. Well, there's one problem found. Bad starter. Now I gotta find the bolt holes. I'm gonna put this back together so I can return it to the the Rylers get some money back. Uh, and shove this one right. It takes you a minute to find the thread, but usually it just goes right where it needs to be. But yeah, that's a nice little trick. You can actually take apart your starters. You can actually get brushes for them, I believe. Uh, you can even take apart your solenoids if you needed to. Two little screws. Oh, I'm holding on to the camera there. Okay, you have a screw on each side. Sometimes, on some of the newer ones, it's like a hex key. Ten times harder to do. But now we're gonna take this. I guess that wasn't the right size after all. Okay. Just be very careful when you're doing this. If you're gonna return it as a core, they might actually inspect it to see if it's been opened. But now I can see, yeah, this starter was never going to turn this engine over. And back together. All right. So now we're going to take this over here, pair it to our new starter. All right. 
<sighs> that was a pain in the butt getting out. Get the tools out of the way. Put our starter right here. Or our old starter, anyway. If you'll say. There we go. Oh. All right. But apparently, there's like some sort of like brace on the back. I'm not going to hook that up. Comes with some shims. Bolt pattern looks correct. This all looks correct. I mean, a little bit different from... Oh, and another way I was able to tell that this was bad is... Uh... It's stuck. This one... You got a little bit of give you want uh, one way. But yeah, so bolt I'm gonna need is of course, well, this was in there like that. And this was the bolt I ended up having to get. So, actually it was in there like this. So that is facing the engine block, which means it's gonna be really hard to get to. So I'm gonna hook that up, which would be this. So I'm gonna need this bolt and this bolt. Thankfully it came with new nuts. Uh, it does come with shims. Am I gonna use them? Probably not. I will put it in initially and just go from there. But it comes with like four shims. Put that in our rattler's box. And we'll get up in there and throw that new starter in. Because everything looks up to snuff. I mean, other than the fact that this is going to be a pain in my ass to get up in there. But, that's a nice little revival. I ain't got no help. My grandpa helped me whenever I first did it, but I've been coming up this way for years. But, that's their old house. It fell apart basically oh I never noticed that there's a freaking bell <laughs> so is there tacos nearby is that does that mean what that means oh okay anyway let's go ahead oh boy this thing's heavy I'm gonna set that right there and I'm gonna show you basically what we're gonna go through entirely wish I Oh, forgot that was over there. All right, so I can't really crawl in here, but fuel pump is on this side of the block, right down there. And I'm gonna possibly get that off if it doesn't want to work on its own. However, right now, I do need to get that air cleaner off, which of course this truck is way too tall. Damn you, square bodies. Oh, a box. Nothing in it. Anyway. Heave and a ho! Ah. Don't you just love square bodies? Oh. All right. Mouse poop on top. First time this thing's been open since 99, 2000, somewhere around there. I'm hoping everything is still up to snuff. Apparently it was a good motor, but. All right. Let's see what Jimmy's got for us. I hear stuff in there. Um. Vacuum lines. <clears throat> of course, they're all bracketed. Because why wouldn't it be? Oh, 
I'll get this off real quick. All right. Right there we have a carburetor. Looks to be manual choke. I might be wrong. I'm not sure. Anyway. You don't look too pretty in there, but... She should clean up. Do we have an accelerator pump? Maybe. Vacuum lines, vacuum lines. Oh, sweet vacuum lines. My question is, is this a frog chaser? Rochester Codder Jet? Or is this something else? Well, that's a good way to know that that's not good. Ah, get over on this side. I'm just looking to see if this is a frog chaser, which it probably is. Looks like just like the one we got on Mitzi. Yep, right there. Camera won't focus, but it says Rochester Crodge Jet right there. Yeah, nice little frog chaser. So I'll have to get the date off that for once I have this thing running, because I will be rebuilding it. You got belts. Now I think about it, I saw a belt for it somewhere around here. Oh, right there. You got belts everywhere. So if one of them decides to snap and fly off, we are prepared. But I'm gonna take that bolt, that, that wing nut, put that right there. Because once I have it spinning, I will. Oh. Once I have it spinning, I'll spin it over, make sure we have power. And. Oh, oh boy. Oh. I have a feeling this thing's not even gonna open, no matter how hard I try. I even dropped it. Just stick. Just stick. I heard it. I heard it trying. Just stick. How much do I have? Screwdriver. Hmm. All right, let's see. Are we going to have skeletized friends in here? Or what are we going to have? That's actually surprising. No skeletized friends. We just gotta. Oh. Never mind. We've got a skeletized friend right there. Well, I'll have to dump everything out of here. Oh boy. They're eating into the freaking deal. Damn, they were desperate. So I'll have to get a new air cleaner. But anyway, let's get under here. Get that new starter in. And hook up the battery, see if we've actually got turnage. Thankfully, we got nice little unused bolt holes. So, say hello to my starter bolt holder 3000. So, this is our small wire, which is going to go on that post, which I'm going to put in before I put it up there. And before I put it in and bolt it up, I will hook up this wire and this wire, which I don't know what this one does, but I guess it just crosses positive. Hence the solenoid, which then turns the starter, I guess. But now everything looks great, so we're going to go ahead and take this off. And then set it up in here. Which I believe that was the old one. We're going to set the old one over, over there. I already lost a small one. So hopefully I don't lose the small one. 
So we'll get this one and get it all up in there and you know, hook up the battery and make sure that it doesn't try to engage. And then I will go over and bump the battery and see if it starts trying to turn over. And uh, I'll check the oil before I do that. And then we'll go from there. I'll update you once I have it done. All right. So the starter's in. And what we're going to do now is hook the battery up and see if it tries to engage on its own or if it's actually going to work with me. doesn't look like it's trying to engage so all right we are now positive that so it's not trying to engage on its own that's still a little bit worrisome so i don't know i'll probably have to replace that deal it's just right here on the frame and oh That's some ingenuity if I ever saw one. There's the old side post. Hooked right up to whatever. Now apparently, huh. Well, that's slightly different. like a whole ass huh. well it might be different but I'm still gonna try and use it because maybe I can get some money back oh what do we got in the radiator we got a little bit of coolant actually green down in there that's Surprising. After sitting here for at least two decades. But now that we've got the battery hooked up, let's hop in here. Check that we're in park. Obviously. No, I have not actually spun this over, but oh, check the oil. That's probably something I should do, which it should be over here. Yep. Right there. Right where you can't really get to. Ah. Oh. oh. That's uh That's a little bit worrisome.
Um, so apparently, it has no oil. It's just barely touching the stick. Looks like we got an oil burner on our hands. Um, just to be safe, I'm going to go grab it, look in the machine shop, see if we've got any in there. I've got some, but it's back in my car, which is a walk. It's a big walk. So I'm gonna go up there, look and see if there's any oil in the machine shed. And we'll see what we got. say we're in the middle of absolute nowhere we're quite literally in the middle of nowhere there's a woodpecker around there somewhere but actually at one point i'm just doing this so i don't have to go through the fucking barbed wire I see. And a deer leg dangling above my head. Must have got an old tractor. But. Oh, my grandpa has a battery charger up here. Even better, that's the same style as the one we used to have. You used to be able to just put that right there. Let it sit there for about a minute. And you could just start your engine. And you could put a timer on it. This thing used to be a fuck. Anyway, I guess 1040. 1040. Also empty. That old tra oh, that's a Ford. <laughs> Exhaust up to an adapter, up to another pipe. That thing's actually kind of neat. No power. There. Yeah, my grandpa's other truck over here. Yeah, a lot of stuff up here. An old bed frame. My grandpa has a lot of stuff up here. Like, a lot. Hey, an old fridge. I just trust myself standing on this. Fuel injector and carburetor cleaner. Huh. And oil filter. Bunch of other <laughs> welding rods. They're using this as a storage cabinet. There's actually still some in there. I'm gonna dump that in the tank the square body. <sighs> this is my grandpa's old truck. That I was gonna buy off him, but it needs work. I guess a tree fell and hit it. But it's a nice truck. I didn't even know he had a tank in the back. Let's look in here and see. Nothing. And a freeze. We've got ramps. Bunch of oil treatment. Hey. Oil. Oil. Got a little bit. It also has a little bit. That's also got a little bit in it. Why is there so much STP oil treatment? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, a 
bunch of stuff up here. Those tires are shot. Um, so I'll do a little bit of searching and I'll let you know if I find anything. All right, I found some oil. I put it in. That's the lock. I'm okay. There, it's two wheel. We're in park. So let's see what happens. No engaging, nothing. Uh, this doesn't help. This thing is wallered out all to hell. It'd be a better idea to actually just replace the battery cable, but I don't have a battery cable to replace it with. Oh, we even have the factory jack. Awesome. And the factory jack instructions. All right. Um... I'm gonna try and squeeze this back into shape and then put it back on. I don't like this. Yeah, I don't like this one bit. Just sits there and wobbles. Alright, well, let's try the starter again, I guess. We've got nothing up here. Do we have power to... Yeah, we've got power. No way. And copyright. That's actually kind of cool. The radio still works. Um, I don't know what that thing is. I know that's lights. That's winch wipers. Yeah, secondary hood pop. I don't know what this switch does. We might actually have half a tank of fuel in there. With the key off. surprising uh, okay so we still don't have turnage I don't know what that does um,
go, turn signals. Huh. So we are not getting turnage for some reason. Well, let me do a little bit of inspecting. I'm going to check all the fuses. And that worked. I like this design. Uh, is that all the further they roll down? Gotta love them. Anyway, I'm gonna go check all these fuses that I believe are under here and see if that's our problem. As per the usual, I'm an idiot. I uh, look down there and I put the wire on the wrong starter bolt. So now we're actually starting to get some sparkles here. I have no clue if this is gonna work with how the cable is because it is wobbly it's all get out i think i saw one actually in the truck That's it. oh hey four words gone <gasps> oh heave ho Now, all right, we've got turnage. That's awesome. She's got a couple of rough spots, but we do have turnage. We also do have another terminal, battery terminal over there. Ah, <sighs> now. Oh. There's no way it just tried to fire. There's no way. There's no way. Does, do we have choke? what that thing does. Where's their choke? I know we've got choke linkage. I just gotta find where the hell it is. Ah. All right, let me do some looking and I'll find the choke real quick. Well, I guess it's a good thing I brought this with me. A little bottle of gas. Let's see what we can do. Well, that might be a problem too. Chokes are kind of held down. Let me get up here and I'll let you know. That's way too much. So you don't have a manual choke. It's vacuum powered. So, what I'm gonna do. Oh, that's a spoon. All right, I'm gonna go crank on her. You guys just watch that, make sure it doesn't catch fire or anything.
Holy crap, she's actually trying. Mm. Well, let's try that one more time. You guys keep an eye on that. It appears we have a runner. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah. That's a great smell. Well, I'm going to go crank on it a little bit more. I'll let you know if I can get it to idle. All right. Now, I think what I'm going to do... Um... I might actually go ahead and do the fuel pump. Just because yeah, it's been sitting for years and years. I kind of want it to run off the tank. But I have to admit, for its first time running in all that time, I don't even know where the exhaust is. I want to see if it blew anything out. Muffler. Oh, so it's not dual exhaust? Huh. Well, I guess it did shoot some out. But no, I think uh getting that fuel pump off is gonna be fun. Um I could hook up a boat tank, which I really don't want to do, which would show me if the fuel is actually pumping. I mean, I've got it sitting right there. I'm gonna go find some gas real quick. Actually throw it in the tank and see if it's actually pumping anything or if there's anything even in the tank. That sending unit could be bad or stuck in one position. It's saying it has a little over half a tank. Obviously, doubt after sitting for 24 years that it has fuel. So, I'm gonna look in here, see if we've got any fuel in here. But, <sighs> love the woods. It's actually really peaceful out here. Just with me working on a truck. I miss Andrew though. All right, for today, I'm gonna stop this just for the simple fact that. Sun's starting to go down, but next time I'll come out here. Uh, next time I come out here, I will bring some gas with me, and I'll do a little bit of research because I've actually I haven't done it before, but I'm gonna replace the fuel pump. We got a brand new one right here. We will get it to run, let it idle, and then we'll change the oil. When we change the oil, we will also do the plugs and the wires which I got the plugs down there but starter seems to be engaging great but I think for today I'm going to stop go ahead and disconnect our ground just for the simple fact that it doesn't use any power take our vintage spoon throw it over there I'm going to leave these here for now. What gets me is the fact that this thing comes down really easy. You can still see it's sparkly little paint there. It's been sitting here for a very long time. It's still got some shine in her. So I'll just put that there. 
and I'll collect my tools. I'm gonna check to see if that works. This thing's gonna need a big wash. But I'm gonna collect my tools and I'll see you the next time I'm out here working on it. Hey everyone, we are back with our 1978 K30. Uh, today's goal, fuel pump. Uh, drain the fuel from the driver's side tank. And if I can get it to idle, we will go ahead and change the oil after it's idling. I'm trying out something a little different this time. I've got a new little tripod. Uh, got off the uh, TikTok shop, and we're going to see what happens with it. I kind of tested it out here the other night, and it, for the most part, follows where you're going. Not entirely, but, you know, it's, it's there. But <sighs> we'll get this thing popped and get ourselves to work. All right. Our first step into getting this off is, well, take off the fuel lines, which I'm not going to like doing, but whatever, um, I guess I'm going to have to crawl under there to get to them, but all right, I'll meet you guys under there. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna climb under there. All right, you're gonna have one fuel line here, and then I believe two soft lines. I'll climb underneath for the soft lines, but for this one, I ain't crawling under there. If I can get it on the hex. It's usually recommended to use a line wrench, but there. Ah, oh, it's gonna be tight, ain't it? Ah, uh, yeah. Ah. Oh. I just love my classic trucks. Ah, oh, came loose. Sweet. Now keep in mind, this is also my first time ever doing this. I've watched a few videos on how to do it, but videos don't do justice to the real thing. Oh. Doesn't help. There's like no way to access it from the other side either. So you pretty much have to do it like this. Oh, and the good news is all the tires, or the front tires held air. Which, of course, they were the ones that were parked so close up to this wall that it wasn't funny. So, hopefully, that will give me a promising idea of driving this buddy home. Ah, living life one quarter turn at a time. I'm so looking forward to putting the new one in. I've only ever done one of these types of pumps, but it was on an Oldsmobile 350. It was my dad's truck that him and my grandpa built. <sighs> yeah, it's... <coughs> varnished. I did attempt to pump some out of the tank. I got a little bit out of the right side tank and I got nothing out of the left side. So I think the left side might be empty. But you know, all the more good news for us. I'm probably just going to throw fuel in it. Replace this fuel pump. And then send it. Ah, come on. Mm. Ah. 
Ow. Ah, that thing's being stubborn. Ah. Get down in here. If only they invented a ratcheting line wrench. I think that finally just let go. Oh, and apparently... I'm gonna get them two soft lines off and I'll meet you back up here. And I'll show you how I'm going to take off these two bolts on either side. All right, I ended up having this section of hose that cracked. I gotta check that diameter over there. And after checking my surroundings, I was able to find this. It's laying over there in that pile, so. I guess I will use this, hook it up to the fuel line, and route it back up here. But the fuel pump is off. So now I just gotta make sure whenever I put that back up in there that the rod sits on the new one right here so that this pumps. But let's go ahead and get the old the new one. Toss that over there because God knows it's bad anyway. Oh, I don't think I've shown you guys the interior, but she's she's pretty. <clears throat> Got our new one right here. It even comes with dirt. Square body. All right. Bring us a quick area here. Only I could find a broom. But I don't get that lucky. Anyway. <clears throat> if I can get it open. Start rip it open. There. All right. Oh God, it's shiny. <laughs> All right, get our old one, new one. Everything looks right. Inlet, A, I guess that, honestly, I'm not even sure. I th that inlet there, goes up to the carb, I know that. And so I think that big one is our actual uh, supply from the tank, and I think the other one is return line, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, we got this new pump. I'll sit over there. Bye. It comes with I believe both of the gaskets. Right. Let's actually read these. Is they're probably important. Uh, let's get the gaskets off the ground. Fuck. For some reason it came with two gaskets. I'm not sure. Alright. Removal. Your new replacement fuel pump may slightly differ from the original equipment. These minor modifications will not alter or change operation once mounted to the engine. Okay. Replace all fuel lines that so shines of swelling, cracks, aging, or leaks. Doing that, I'm doing that. Remove fuel pump to engine bolts and properly dispose of pump. Okay, it's disposed of. Remove the old mounting gasket from the engine block and clean the surface. 
Inspect spacer for cracks, if required, between pump and engine block. Some models may use a push rod to activate the pump. Activate. Okay. Apply grease or petroleum jelly to hold rod in the retracted position. <sighs> yeah, that would have been a great idea because the fuel pump kind of fell. Um... Install the mounting bolts and tighten them alternately until seated. Torque the bolts to the manufacturer's recommended sp specification. One, two, ugga dugga. Okay. Start the engine and inspect for engine oil and fuel leaks. If leaks occur, immediately stop the engine and repair all leaks. So I've got to get that rod back up in there. Anything on the back? Same shit, but in Spanish. What's this paper? Mechanical fuel pump. Installation instruction. You gave me two. Mm -hmm. What's this one say? That's Spanish. With the cam in the engine, misalignment may cause damage to a new pump. This is literally the same instructions. All right, well, I guess let's check this, see if the gasket came off. It did not. All right. Oh, yeah. Mud divers, leave me alone. That definitely worked. All right. I'll get in here and check the gaskets. All right, right there's the old gasket. Let's see if I can pop it off all in one piece. Hacksaw blade. As you can see, the rod fell down, so I'll have to get that off. It's gonna be a royal pain in my ass. Of course, that just drops right into it, but okay. Marked it. All right. I might end up just having to take off this plate, which I don't want to do, but I'll have to take off the whole plate, get in there, actually get that up, that up in there. And as for like grease, I might. I'm surrounded by stuff. Um. I don't know. Oh, that. Tire went flat. Oh, all right. Well, oh well. Important thing is, I can stop. Um. Saying there's a bunch of old stuff up here, I can probably find like a grease gun. Or... That shelf is coming apart. I took pictures of years ago. Yeah. It's an old Clorox bottle. Jug. It's kind of cool. Right, I guess let's check all these filing cabinets. Nothing. So I've got oil and stuff, but... Oil will just make it fall out. It's need something metal. Motor oil. That's dope. Okay. Oh, I, that's what I ended up getting out of the tank on the right side. But yeah, she's pretty. All right. Pasteurized process cheese spread. Okay. Uh, I don't see anything in here.
disappointment. The air impact. Well. I don't know. I got all this stuff. Decoration and the revised statue. Okay. Um, brake fluid. Tube repair kit. Fast drying. Oh, that's gasket maker. It's gas. Might be a little expired. The uh, clearance light. Acrylic finishes, cream glaze. Measuring tape, weather wax. That ain't gonna work. Well, it might, but I'm not gonna try it. A lot of stuff up here. The boat motor. Alright, well, I might be up Shit Creek here. What's in this box? Nails. Well, veterinary medicine. In this box, voltage regulator. Okay. Uh, what's this? Oh, well, it's a lantern battery that looks like it's about to explode. It's like spray for cattle. Um,. I don't think I'm going to have any grease, so I'm going to have to figure out a way to get that rod back up in there without harming anything. So, I'm going to get the gasket off and get that rod back up in place and attempt to drop that rod right onto the new pump, put the new pump on, hook up all lines. And I will meet you back, and we will put five gallons of fuel in it and see what happens. Because I've got places to be. All right, for today, I'm done. I can't get it. I'm going to do watch a few more videos on it. Because, and possibly next time bring out some freaking help. Like my dad or something. But I'm, I'm going to come out tomorrow and try it again. But that's all I can promise you guys. Because... I can't get it. I, I just can't. I've got places to be today. But. We're this close. If that it, it, It's supposed to be. You take that one bolt out. And put one of your. The longest fuel pump bolt. Into that hole. And it holds the damn thing in. It's not holding the damn thing in. So I'm going to look, uh, I've got a couple 350s sitting at home, and I'll look and see what I can find, because I don't know what the hell's going on, I can't figure it out, but I'll see you guys tomorrow. Alright, day three, oh, hey, that's one of my pens, not sure why it's out here, anyway, had the bulldog run out there. And we tried the whole grease thing, and it just made it worse. And while I was looking at it, I realized I don't have rear brakes. 
which is why it's spongy as all get out. And there's a blown line. So what I'm gonna do, just for the sake of creeping it home and getting it back out here, is I'm going to get a block off plug. I was lucky that this one had brakes. Kind of, after bleeding them. But, somewhere around here, I've got a little jar or can full of plugs. And I will take one of them plugs. Why don't I hear my dad again? Mail. Hold on. I've got to eat here in a second. Sorry about that. Mail lady came. But I got a little jar full of fittings and a bunch of other stuff. I believe I have one that I can just screw into the hole for the brakes. Move all these washers out of the way. I don't need those. Dump all these out. Something like this, I guess. But it'll just go around where the brake line's supposed to be and block it off so that I can just use front brakes for now. Uh, I'm gonna take an assortment with me because I'm not sure what size it is. Uh, but this way I can just block off the brakes in the rear, drive it home on front, so I'm just going to take a back road because uh, there's a road that went just down from where my grand uh, from where my grandpa's place is, and I can just drive it. Oh, surely there's more. Here's another, another big one. I could probably drive it home on no brakes if I really wanted to, but I'm not that sketchy. I, I, I have my limits here, folks. But. Doesn't help, I don't know what size I need. All right, well. I guess. That'll have to do. I'm not finding any more block offs. But I'll just go ahead and block off that where it's supposed to go. And I guess go from there. I ain't got much of another choice. So I'll be back out with my grandpa's here in a minute. And I'll update you out there. Yeah, I guess a little bit of a walk. Walk from all the way up there. Got yeah, pretty much a really decent path out here. But quite literally, a little of nowhere. Over there, there's an old bed off of like a C10. Looks to be the late 60s. Right there. And a bunch of old farm equipment around. pasture out here the old barn I actually used to raise goats up here we actually had one goat we ended up having to tie to a uh, it was a old rim I think it's out yeah it's out there and it was on a tie out cable and he decided that it was gonna be a smart idea to wrap himself around the tie-out cable and cut his own foot off. He was an idiot, but it was alright. He was a three-legged goat. So yeah, we got a little bit of a walk. But right there's the truck. We've got the fuel pump on. 
I am going to blow out the line. Here's my mouth because, okay. Wonder what that does. Absolutely nothing, what's this do? Oh, turn that light on. Okay, well, anyway. Oh, hey, there's a little Mountain Dew there. Anyway. I'm only doing that to avoid the barbed wire. Right there she is. Now this was their old house that kind of fell apart in the disrepair. But here we go. Up here to the truck. As I get smacked in the face by tree branches. Alright. Yeah, my dad came out here and had to get the old bulldog out. Which I don't always like doing, but... You know, sometimes... When it comes to stuff like this, I'm not entirely smart on it, but in the end, the end result is the same. Fuel pump's on. So, we got it in. Uh, I gotta hook up the lines after I blow them all out. And I, will, I siphoned out some fuel out of that tank. I got as much as I could anyway. And that's what it ended up looking like. It wasn't all that horrible, but there wasn't any debris that I could see anyway. And from what I can tell, this one is empty. Yeah. So I'll be putting five gallons in this tank. And I will... Whatever I got switched on the, that. I don't know if that just switches the cylinder or switches the uh but the radio works. Oh yeah, I disconnected the battery. But anyway. So I had the brake line going to the rear on this side blow out. So I'm going to disconnect that and put I don't know what size it is yet. I just picked up one of each. Right here's the one eighth, and here's a quarter inch, along with whatever thing I got in my pocket. Got these, which we'll just go on, on there, cap it off for now, and I'll be able to at least drive it home with front brakes, which I'm not holding my breath on because they aren't. Ooh, shit, I can't even see it. Ow. <sighs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so they might be just a little rusty. It'd be a smart idea to get them turned, but... I don't have that kind of money. But... I already got a price set on tires because these are decent enough to creep it home on, but they're bad. As for this one, that one went flat. I'm going to look around up here. I know my grandpa's got a mini air compressor around. Plug it in, get it aired up. And we'll get both the rear tires aired up, air up the other front tire. That one held air surprisingly but for now we're going to get the fuel lines blown out hooked back up to the pump and then uh go ahead hook up the battery start getting it cranked on and see if it'll actually pump fuel after i put five gallons of gas in it so i'll put you on a time lapse we'll get to work All right, currently what we're fighting 
is getting the actual threaded line that runs from, I'll try to set you up here, there. Okay, you got your fuel pump down in here. It's a metal line that runs up through the front of the block up to your carb. That's what I'm fighting right now. And it's not wanting to go back on. So I've got the rubber lines on. Rubber lines are on and tightened down. Uh, after I get that done, uh, I'll dump fuel in the tank. It acts like there was a little bit in the tank, but not very much. Um, so if nothing else, ironically, we have a little pump right here. It's out of a Dodge Dynasty with the wiring. I can just hook up positive and negative and make it a clicky clack. But I'm not really interested in doing that. I want to get it running like it's supposed to run. Not even Mitzi has a block pump. It's got a block pump. It's just not using it. So we'll get this line somehow tightened on because it's not wanting to get started. So I'll fight this, get it gone. And we'll move on to our next step. All right, so recap, got the fuel pump on. All lines are now hooked up. I ended up having to take it apart right here at this junction right there. And let the uh, hose itself dangle. So I get started down there, fix it up here, and then tighten that one down, and then tighten that one down. But now I think what we're going to do is throw that five gallon of gas into the tank and then jump the sea foam in the tank and go from there, I guess. I mean, that's all we really gotta do. Uh, once I have it running, I will look around here for a funnel. I'm pretty sure there are some in the machine shed. And I will let it run for a little bit and make sure that it stays cool and everything. Once I let it run for a little while, then we will do the oil change after I find something to drain the oil into. So let's get her done. All right, we got five gallons of fuel in the tank. I didn't put anything in there, just for a simple fact of, I don't really care. Um, so what we're going to do this. Oh, I mean, I knew that was going to happen. I don't know why I'm surprised. We'll just stand on that again. Anyway, hook up our battery here. Oh, that looks absolutely terrific. Oh, that's why I meant to grab was a pair of deals. Anyway. See if I can get it to run. All right. Check for power. We've got power. Okay. Let's see what happens. Come on. Obviously that ain't right because, you know, I just put five gallons of fuel in it. Uh, just to see if we can get it to fire. Let me find what I did with that bottle. Here it is. Dump some of this excess gas in here and dump down the carb and then try it again. All right, let's try that again.
Okay. Come on. Well, uh, she's trying. Tachometer ain't working. First time idling in 24 years. <laughs> okay well that's a problem i'm gonna have to address um well she seems to be pumping fuel now seems to be anyway Let's check down here for any leaks the exhaust is Smoking over here. I'm guessing possible plugged exhaust. Or it could just be oil. As for brake or fuel, I'm not seeing any leaks. Um, that was an interesting sound. All right, uh, uh, how much is in here? I remember checking. Okay, it's trying to cycle. Okay, I'm gonna top that off with some pre-diluted for now. Uh, and try and fire it up again. I think we might have a needle and seat issue. That and the smoking exhaust.
that's that one brake line that's leaking. Oh, it's leaking at two spots. Well, that's amazing. Kind of curious. Seems like one of the wheels are a little stuck. one main issue which one is making sure we have brakes and it looks like all we will have is fronts for now because I don't have stuff to fix brakes here <clears throat> smoking like a sieve all right so transmission seems to work so what we're gonna do first things first is oil change. Second thing is going to be spark plug wires. The spark plug wires are going to be a little bit more difficult than I anticipated, but I want to get them done so I make sure that it's not running lean or that they're fouled out considering it hasn't ran in 24 years. But get all that done and I'll have to address the reason as to why it's not wanting to move very quickly. And then we will address the brake issue, which is going to be just block, blocking off the line, literally. So, let's get to it. I'm going to go find a spark plug gap tool and a funnel and something to drain the oil into. And I'll meet you back out here. All right, after searching for something to drain the oil into, and for a spark plug gap tool, which of course I'm going to find, my grandpa is uh, actually in town right now, so he's stopping and grabbing one real quick. oil drained take all the plugs out I'd like to do it one at a time replace a plug replace a wire that's how I'll probably do it oh once I get plugs and wires done put the breather back on which I'm kind of scared about doing for the simple fact that uh, there was a mice, mouse nest in the, oh boy, that was a workout. Anyway, got a funnel, a little filter wrench, so I could probably take it off by hand, so that I know my grandpa always uses flame oil filters. I'm not putting a frame oil filter on it, I'm putting a Wix filter on it. So. There's another bike. Awesome. Anyway, I'm going to get the oil drained, get new oil in it. After we just let it sit there and run and cycle through, get some of the contaminants down to the bottom. Uh, 
So, yeah, I gotta figure out what size the drain plug is, which I'm pretty sure it's 16. And we'll get it drained out, get new oil in her, and then, of course, plugs along with wires. I'll catch you all as soon as I get this done because I'm not going to show this process because it's simple. All right, all the plugs are replaced. Here's all the old plugs and uh, yeah. She had some uh, calcification and rust on her. So I'm thinking with all the new plugs installed as well as all the new plug wires, I'm gonna take these and put them right there for now. And now I think I'm going to I think I'm gonna fire back up with the new oil change, oil filter, as well as the new plugs, new wires. And the new fuel pump. Let it run for a little bit. And then attempt to back it out a little bit. Enough to where I'm on completely flat ground. And then I will work on capping off that one brake line. And then I will make the decision on whether or not I'm going to go ahead and drive it home or if I do this the safer junkyard digs way and uh, make sure everything's safer or I could just do it the bicycle garage way and you know wing it so let's go ahead and get this moved so I can pull it back. That's what happened. Uh huh. Okay. I almost drove over the entire block. Okay, so I'll fire it up, pull it forward, get that block from up from under there, and roll it back. And then I don't have an outlet over here. Got an outlet right there, so. Then I'll run back up to the house and grab a the air compressor that he has and bring it on up here and see what happens. All right. She does shift in the middle, but it is a little iffy. Got some exhaust leaks. I got her pulled back. Only reason I didn't leave it here is I wouldn't have been able to get out of the truck, but you kind of see there was our brake, our brake, that's our brake leaks right there. Uh, that is one sexy truck, I gotta admit. up here uh, get some of these wood slats moved over and pull it back in enough to where I can still get out and then address the brake issue and then bring that air compressor up and get the air the tires aired up and see if I can't take it for a drive That was. Let's go check.
Well, there you have it, folks. 1978 K30. First time on the road in 24 years. Uh, I'm going to have to do a little bit of stuff to it. I ended up shattering the, wind sh the driver's side window. Plus, the driver's side door isn't wanting to line up quite right. So, we'll get all that taken care of. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit your little bell notification if you want to see some more content like this. And I'll talk to you all later.